In Batman Gotham City Chronicles, all the information you need to start a mission can be found here in the mission booklet. And it looks a little something like this. The mission title with some story text to set the mood. A setup diagram that shows you where to place all the bits, such as miniatures, cards, tokens, etc. Basically everything that should be on the board at the beginning of the game. So on this map, you would place a brute with chains here, the owl with handgun here, bomb tokens, reinforcement tokens, and these areas here, marked with this computer icon, get these little miniature computer consoles. Continue placing tokens and miniatures until you've recreated the scenario laid out in the mission booklet. You should end up with something that looks like this. Now that that's done, you've probably noticed these numbered areas here, here, and here. These are locations where your heroes are placed when you start a mission. So in this case, if I selected Batman as my first hero, he would start in this area here, marked first. Same goes for your second and third heroes. This here is a list of things you'll need throughout the mission. Now, some of these items have already been placed when we set up the map. The listed items that you haven't placed should be placed nearby so you have them when you need them. Like the bomb miniatures, you need these, but you don't need them on the board until a bomb has been primed. So having them nearby will save you from rummaging through the box later. This blue icon here tells us that in this mission, the heroes have initiative, meaning they start first. If this icon was gray, it would mean that the villain player starts first. The mission description will also list the mission's endgame conditions. As soon as these conditions are met, the game ends immediately. In this mission, for example, the game ends at the end of the hero's seventh turn, or when four bombs have been neutralized. When an endgame condition is met, take a look at the victory conditions listed here. The victory conditions in this mission state that if there's only one bomb primed or no bombs primed, the heroes win. But if there are two or more bombs primed, the villains win. Earlier in this video, I mentioned selecting my first, second, and third hero. Well, here on the second page of the setup, you'll find a listing of all available heroes for this mission. Now, you can't just select any three heroes from that list. You have to select one hero from each grouping. So, in this mission, for my first hero, I have the option of choosing either Batman or Rene Montoya. For my second hero, I can choose from either one of these Catwoman variations or Bluebird. Repeat this process for the third hero and you'll have yourself a full team. Now, this next part is a bit of a two-parter. This number on your hero board indicates how many energy cubes that this particular hero starts with. For now, let's place those energy cubes in your reserve zone. This number here tells me that each hero needs to move five energy cubes from their reserve zone into their fatigue zone. So my hero's starting cubes would look something like this. The mission setup also gives you all the information you need to set up the villain's command post. In this example, the villain's recovery rate is set to five. There should be nine energy cubes placed in their reserve zone and two cubes placed in their fatigue zone. And this list here tells you which tiles you need to place in the river and which order. Any characters listed here on the side are not placed in the river, nor are their miniatures placed on the board. Both the tile and the miniature should be set aside until it's time to be placed, and the mission dialog will tell you exactly when that should be. This bit of text here describes events that the villain will be able to activate on their turn. Activating an event is just like activating any other tile. Pay the cost listed here, move the tile to the end of the river, and perform the action detailed in the mission description. In cases where there's more than one event available, the villain will have to choose one of those options. And last but not least, the mission-specific rules. These rules here will tell you what the villain has to do to prime a bomb and what the hero has to do to disarm it. So in this example, the villains need to be in the same area as the bomb and roll a complex manipulation of three to prime it. It also tells you to replace the bomb token with the miniature if they're successful. The rules also tell us that the villain character can activate a bomb remotely by walking up to a computer terminal and rolling a complex thought of three.
Heroes, on the other hand, can neutralize these computers by being in the same room as them and rolling a complex action of three. If the heroes are in the same area as a bomb miniature, meaning that it's primed, they can attempt a complex manipulation of six to neutralize it. And there you have it. If you've been watching along, then you should be all ready to hop into your first game. But if you want to see the game in action, stay and watch this play to sink a city. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social.